I haven't said much about the European Union lately. I've just waited for events to play out. But I think now's the time to really start telling the truth because they have shown their true colours. With Brexit, with leaving the European Medicines Agency, and, you know, I'm often very critical, but well done, Boris Johnson and team, for deciding that we should look after our own national health situations, our own pandemics or emergencies, should they arise, we've made some good decisions. Kate Bingham, the woman put in charge of the vaccine programme in this country, has done a brilliant job. I went along on Friday, I went to Crystal Palace Football Club to get my first jab, and I have to say, there was almost a carnival atmosphere there. The whole pe people were happy, the whole thing was efficient. I mean, I was in and out in no time. It was brilliant, and nearly 30 million of those jabs have now been administered. By contrast, the EU, centralised, run by bureaucrats, has made a complete mess of it. They were months behind ordering necessary vaccines for Europe, and they can now see headlines in German, French and other newspapers saying, we're jealous of Britain. With Brexit, they're doing well and we're doing badly. And now they're starting to lash out. But not before President Macron and Angela Merkel decided to have a go at the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Both of them saying it wouldn't work in older people and it would be ineffective. And that in countries with quite big anti-vax populations that exist already. So where are we today? Well, after she threatened to reimpose a hard border in Northern Ireland, Ursula von der Leyen is now talking about two things. The first is she's telling us that they're going to stop any vaccine exports to the United Kingdom. They know that by doing that, it won't make a huge difference to the EU roll out. It might delay them. It might speed them up rather by a week or so, but it could put Britain back up to two months. Now, I don't actually believe that because I think we've got the wit to find our way around it. But that's the first thing, you know, threatening to punish Brexit Britain for getting something right that they've got wrong. But the second thing is even more telling. Six times I stood up in the European Parliament over the years. I did it when Barroso was in charge of the Commission, when Juncker was in charge of the Commission, and indeed when von der Leyen took over in charge of the Commission. And I said this was the new form of communism. And of course, everybody laughed. Oh, isn't it funny? Farage is off on one again. But what von der Leyen is now suggesting is that the EU may well take over the running and management of the factories. Now, anybody that has studied communist Marxism, even at GCSE, knows controlling the means of production is what communism is actually all about. They are showing their true colours. European solidarity is now for the birds. Countries breaking away, ordering their own vaccines directly, some going to Russia, some going to China. And I think this bodes very badly for the future of the European Union. But what about our relationship? So would you believe that the withdrawal agreement that's been signed and put into British law, yes, I know, I was sceptical of it, but I didn't realise just how badly things would work out. Not only has it cut Northern Ireland off from the rest of the UK, not only is it a rotten deal for our fishermen, but we're still paying vast sums of money, paying vast sums of money to an organisation that threatened to put a border back in Ireland, to an organisation that are taking a series of legal actions against us, to an organisation that has made exporting goods into the EU unnecessarily difficult, totally contrary to the spirit of the agreement, and an EU that still hasn't actually ratified the deal. They've been sitting on this now for the last three months. Despite all of it, we will pay them £10 billion this year and nearly £10 billion next year. And by the time from the referendum vote to us finally getting out of these financial obligations, we'll have paid them nearly £80 billion. I now cannot see why we should pay £10 billion this year to an organisation that is acting in bad faith, an organisation that is threatening to block legally acquired vaccines and kit for vaccines from that plant in the Netherlands. And I honestly think that the government should stop playing softly, softly with the European Union. They are being absolutely brutish 
and nasty to us. And we just seem to lie down and take it every time. Let's now threaten them with this money. They're in breach of what we signed up and agreed to. And if they continue in this manner, we will stop giving them billions of pounds of British taxpayers' money. That strikes me as being a fit and reasonable thing to do. And I urge the government in their negotiations to tell the EU, which is struggling for cash anyway, start playing with a straight bat or we're not going to send you any more money.